I'm Kristen Fukushima. Welcome to Delicious Little Tokyo. This is episode one of our Little Tokyo Food series. And today we are celebrating the history of Little Tokyo food. Welcome back. We're about to start our tour of the history and especially the food history of Little Tokyo. And I'm really excited to invite our guest for the tour, Keiko Agena. Hey, Kristen. Hi, Keiko. Oh, thank Hi, you, everybody. Yeah. Also, we're very lucky to have our usual food history tour guide with us, Bill Watanabe. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Keiko. I'm glad I could be able to join you guys on this delicious Little Tokyo food tour. I'm a member of the Little Tokyo Historical Society, and so we're going to give you a little taste, a little background and history of some of the foods connected to Little Tokyo. Yeah. Is that also in the Smithsonian? Like the... Yeah, oh, there's, there's okay. one just like this in the Smithsonian. My name is Brian Kito. Um, the third generation owner of Fugetsuto Confectionery. We started in 1903, so we're at 116, 117 years. Well, we have two kinds of type of pastry. Well, actually three here now, is we have the very traditional ones that maybe my grandfather made back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we have those that we just started up maybe within the last 20 years, 15, 20 years, is a more snack style, uh, like the rainbow dango, peanut butter mochi, chocolate mochi and the fruit flavored mochi. And that all just came about within the last 15 years. His grandfather is credited with the invention of the fortune cookie. Now, many people think the fortune cookie is a Chinese invention, but it actually dates back to Fugetsudo, and that was Brian Kito's grandfather's invention. And although there are three that have made claim to fame for the, for the fortune cookie, and actually two of them have gone to court what? to try to settle who, who is the originator. <laughs> it's so dramatic. Uh, the truth of the matter is, I think it's really us. And oh my God, I have goosebumps. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this is called dorayaki. It's a pancake with uh, the bean paste in the middle. It's kind of a very traditional style pastry and still very popular in Japan, but in Japan, very few people make it the way I do it because it's pretty much been fully automated by now. So uh, I don't think many people even know how to do it like this anymore. <laughs> this is a very old style. I have a 19 year old son mm -hmm. and um, uh, amazingly, I think he wants to take over the business. <gasps> What he's making there is uh, called ohagi, and uh, it's a reverse. It's got the bean paste on the outside with a mochi rice ball in the middle. I think that's more the amazing part of the future for this store is that we have a new generation coming in that wants to carry it on. And so we're at 117 years. Uh, Jesus, where's the limit? I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. I got samples that you guys are gonna have some. They're warm still. Oh, Keiko, you took a big bite. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I want like a dozen of these right now. Okay. <laughs> That was great. That was so fun. <laughs> that was delicious. Um, we're going to head over to the Village Plaza in a second, but okay, just about where we are. This is First Street North, the historic part of Little Tokyo, uh, officially federally preserved. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I always tell people if we all fail and Little Tokyo is not here anymore, uh -huh. these buildings will be here forever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're actually coming up on some of the LTSC buildings. 
home at the bottom is Farbar. Bill, do you want to tell us more about that? Bill, what have you got? This is the uh, Far East Cafe, and also currently known as the Far Bar. Uh, the Far East Cafe has been a part of Little Tokyo since the 1930s. This is a part of the National Historic Landmark. And so this building goes way back into the 1890s. The sign that is above calling the Far East Cafe Chop Suey is one of the few remaining uh, neon signs featuring Chop Suey. Every town, small town, every city had Chop Suey restaurants uh, years ago. But today, there are very few restaurants left. Well, here we are in Japanese Village Plaza, the spine of Little Tokyo, and like a place where people like to hang out. What, what are some of your favorite places here? Mitsuru is known for their imagawayaki. Okay, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what yeah. is imagawa, imagawa yaki? It is the pancake with the red bean or on inside. Oh, okay, yes. I think we'll learn more about this from Bill. Okay. What do you know about it, Bill? What's interesting about Mitsuru Cafe is if you look right in to the window, uh, you will see that uh, oftentimes they are making uh, what they call imagawa yaki, which uh, happens to be another uh, sweet cake. It goes great with green tea. It has a bready exterior, but on the inside is also sweet bean. And uh, when you buy it fresh, where it's nice and warm, just off the griddle, uh, delicious while it's still fresh. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. We snuck, we snuck over and got some... Uh... We got a quick little treat, a yeah. little mochi ice cream. Mochi ice cream. Yeah. Mochi with ice cream on the inside. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. Take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I guess we could ask Bill more about this, but mochi ice cream created in Little Tokyo. This Little Tokyo? Yeah, this Little Tokyo. Oh, really? The one we're in right now. Where? Mikalia. <laughs> That's why we're sitting here. I just put two and two together. <laughs> because I feel like sometimes when you say mochi, people think there's ice cream on the inside because yes. I think that's the only way that a lot of people who aren't around Japanese culture mm -hmm. are, have been introduced to, to mochi is like this mochi. Uh. And this one has uh, chocolate chips inside. I know. Are you tasting that? That's amazing. Yeah. At first I thought it was like frozen ice or something. I was like, is this fro too frozen? <laughs> But they're little, little chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe while we eat, Bill can tell us more about it. Uh, Mikawaya is also another Japanese confectionery store. They tried so many different formulas of trying to get ice cream that's cold on the inside that could be contained in a rice outside exterior that was soft enough that you could bite into. Um, so here we have Shabu Shabu House. According to Bill, it is the first Shabu Shabu restaurant in the United States. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. I know. The owner of Shabu Shabu House uh, has told me that uh, he believes he is the very first Shabu Shabu restaurant in the United States. Uh, shabu Shabu is the sound that you make when you take your chopsticks and take a piece of meat or vegetable and you sort of swish it around in hot water. Uh, the key for the very thinly sliced beef uh, is you don't leave it in there to cook a long time. You really slosh it around for just a few seconds, and then you dip it into the sauce and you eat it. It's become very popular. I would guess that probably every uh, major metropolitan area in the United States now has a Shabu Shabu restaurant. So we're walking mm -hmm. over here. I love Cafe Dulce. I'm here. I'm a little bit of a you've, fan too. You've already been here. <laughs> and uh, so this is their setup right this now, which you can come pandemic times and order. Um, I keep thinking of Dulce as a new place, but it's actually next year's their 10 year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they've been around for a minute. Yeah. I'd like to point out Cafe Dulce. Uh, not only is a great coffee shop with delicious uh, pastry, but the owner is Korean American, uh, James Choi. And James has become a, a very active and important part of our community. And so it shows you don't have to be Japanese to be a part of this community and to appreciate and understand uh, the long history and heritage that Little Tokyo brings. 
Thank you so much for joining yes. us today. Do, do you have other um, videos that... Yeah, so one thing that's new and exciting about Delicious this year is instead yeah. of just like one weekend, we're doing a full month. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so we have a matcha week, we have a noodles week, we have a green week for our vegetarians. That's right. But yeah, you know, for this tour, we wanted to talk about history of little Tokyo food, but also where we are right now as a neighborhood with mm. food and moving forward. It's an exciting time. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This yeah. is great. It was really lovely having you on the tour, eating food with you. Oh yeah, this, is, uh, this, this job was so hard. <laughs> oh no. I'll see you again. Yes. Great. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank you so much for joining us for our first episode of our Delicious Little Tokyo Food Series. Thank you to Bill, our Little Tokyo Food History Tour Guide and to Keiko for joining us as a guest on this. And join us for future episodes where we dive deeper into what makes Little Tokyo delicious.